probably going to be Zach. Now recording. There it is. All right. Welcome to the uh, first Builder Call Pocket Network 2024. Exciting. Uh, packed agenda, as I said, um, we are going to cover some more updates, some Shannon stuff, and we've got Zach on the agenda today, um, as well as uh, Patrick Skinner. Uh, they're going to talk about cross collaboration, uh, spotlight on some sockets, uh, etc. So let's just like let's jump right into it with our Morse update. <clears throat> um, so as you know, like uh, or have maybe heard before, we've been working on the final Morse release. Um, Coder team has been leading the charge on that. Uh, release notes are out. Thank you, Toshi. Um, it is now running uh, in in testnet, and we will be pushing for you know a mainnet uh, upgrade um, more than likely the week of January twenty second towards the end of that week or or possibly next. But that's the that's the target right now. Letting it marinate in testnet a little bit, working out just any remaining kinks, making sure all the documentation is ready to support everybody that needs to upgrade nodes. Um, and then we'll, you know, we'll pick a block, I coordinate all this and, and communicate it out. Um, but if anybody wants to jump on notes and just kind of check it out, uh, they're available now. Link is here. I think I shared this document out with everybody after, if I haven't been doing that, sorry, uh, I will definitely do that with this one. Um, <clears throat> uh, so that's where we are there. Uh, and that's exciting to cut kind of the final, you know, final icing on the cake, I guess. And, uh, and then we're going to. And we're going to move on and talk about Shannon. <laughs> um, any any questions before we like jump ahead uh, on this? Pretty straightforward. Um, but any of the testnet guys uh, that are on the call, anybody want to anything that, we, that should get called out? I see Ian, I see Shane. We got like half the testnet crew on the call today. All right, we're good. Cool. Okay, um, we will move on then. Uh, Shannon upgrades. Um, okay, so what we're planning here is uh, by next week, uh, we will have a full public facing roadmap. Uh, we've been working on it, <clears throat> and it's very close to done. Um, and that will be great. Uh, that, that, that'll be the first time we're like kind of sharing the bigger vision. And it goes beyond just like what's coming in testnet and mainnet. There are some items on there that even kind of go a bit a bit further into the future. Let's call it mainnet v1.x uh, releases, like like what what essentially the team is uh, thinking about, planning, um, etc. We had uh, spoken about audits in the last meeting. Uh, SMT is like very close to a final decision on a firm. We will likely also have that wrapped up next week when we when we pick the firm. We've got about three, four proposals that we're reviewing, giving feedback on, uh, and just evaluating the quality of before we make that decision. Um, so that will be coming soon. <clears throat> Uh, there's a wrap pocket migration project that we had also told you all about before the break. Uh, that planning is still in the works. There are some prereqs for uh, actually executing on it, which we need to get to stable testnet first uh, and some EVM support on, on, on the roll up side. Uh, so teams looking at like things like Polaris, which is the EVM for Cosmos, uh, to be able to facilitate some of that. Um, Raid Guild is the team that is uh, planning. Uh, and they're the team that had originally built the Rat Pocket uh, bridge. Um, so they are now uh, looking at uh, evaluating what we're doing on the roll-up side and giving the team feedback on, okay, like this is what we're going to need from you guys to be able to like migrate and and set this set this up for Shannon. Um, 
And then exciting, as we're getting closer and closer to uh, testnet day, uh, the team is also starting to think about um, places where community can start to get involved. And uh, we have some support and action items for you guys this week. Uh, first one being um, we're motivated since we are joining the Celestia ecosystem. They will be the data availability layer under the hood of the rollup. Uh, that we're interested in supporting them directly, uh, particularly the archival nodes uh, that they have available. Um, it's a beast. Uh, there's a high uh, storage requirement for it, uh, which is why we think it's perfect uh, for us to support that um, as we offer, you know, obviously an incentivization uh, model uh, to get things like that um, run. Uh, so if anyone is interested, uh, we're doing a little bit of diligence on what it would take for us to support Celestia this way. Uh, and obviously, like, we're going to need known runners for that. So if anybody's interested, um, please ping me uh, and I'll direct you guys over to the Grove team that are going to probably quarterback it. Um, we're also working on like what we can do there with some financials and, and some additional support for any kind of like early adopters, uh, details on that or TBD, but we've even got to, um, uh, reach out to Celestia on that one as well. We have a conversation going. Um, so yeah, register interest in, if you're interested. Uh, the other thing is we wanted to reach out to, um, community on uh, block explorer evaluations, Cosmos ecosystem. So um, we would like to have more options. Uh, so if anybody has any experience here, um, please let us know. We would love to take some impact, uh, some feedback on explorers that you've either used on other projects, seen on other projects in Cosmos ecosystem that you like. Um, yeah, just give us a heads up. Um, we're compiling a list of things that we should be looking at, but we know we we can't be everywhere and there's and there's maybe some things that we've missed. So uh, definitely, uh, again, you can ping me directly on that. Uh, if you've got any recommendations, we'd love to hear about them. Um, and then finally, um, due to the success of Harry's like presentation going back uh uh, last last year, <laughs> and uh, I, I believe even like Shane, you've done some nice presentations in some other, maybe in the more in the community call. But um, the goal for this is not just for like us to talk at you guys. Um, it's really about uh, making this more collaborative. So we are definitely looking for volunteers. And we would like to plan out an agenda. Zach and I are going to get together next week and try to plan out the next four to six uh, builder calls. And so anyone that's got any uh, topics you want to see that go beyond just the, you know, Shannon updates, Morse updates, things like that. Um, you know, we'd like some feedback on that. Or if you want to present something uh, in this call, like, please let us know. And then we'll work with uh, Zach on that to, like, schedule it in uh, and make sure that, you know, you know, your voice is heard. You can do Prezo. And then obviously, um, you know, we can create, we record these. They end up on uh, YouTube as uses on socially. So we can we can pump that for you, uh, especially if you're coming in from another project and, and you're talking about how you guys are leveraging pocket or things like that. Like we can definitely help amplify that and get some eyeballs on your own projects. So, um, yeah, any ideas around that, please shoot them our way. I'll, I'll okay. pause there if questions on any of that. Yeah, I have a couple, um, and definitely echoing that. So, um, there's a really awesome opportunity for us to start getting a lot of content out there. Um, almost everybody in this call is working for the Dow in some way and getting paid. So um, this is a great opportunity for you to have like marketing and, and other kind of collateral of the work that you're doing, which goes towards, you know, all the things in our ecosystem that we talk about, like proof of impact when you want to open a new socket or get an RFP, like you have all these assets we can use, but as we're looking to bridge to use Celestia more and basically have more like clout um, in the ecosystem, like these kind of these kind of pieces of content and presentations go a really long way. Um, I don't know if anybody's in the the Telegram channels, but constantly people are saying, "Why don't we have more YouTube content?" Um, and this is a really easy way for all of us to win by doing that. So, um, and I'm happy to work with people on it if we want to do a a bigger thing. You know, Shane. I think uh, last week did a great cut up of, of a conversation in one of the ecosystem calls. And so we can, we can tackle some of the, how do we package it up and make it marketable for you? 
Um, so yeah, please reach out to us. It's like a win for everybody. I do have a couple questions for you, Mateo. So the full public roadmap, is this going to be in GitHub or are we going to be posting it somewhere else? Like where, where are people going to find it? Uh, yeah, great question. Um, I think it'll be both will be the answer to that. It'll live in, it's, uh, it, you know, it's, it's nicely diagrammed out. It'll live in, uh, GitHub, but then it'll also be in formats that like, uh, ads can use and other, other people can use for, you know, uh, social, uh, marketing, whatever you want to do with it. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll get it out there in a couple of different formats so you can like run with it. Yeah. And maybe that's a good time to just also throw this back to the, all of you. It's like, um, it's an opportunity to look at that roadmap and say what's missing from it and then make the, you know, let us know. So that way we can either slot in, um, I don't know if there's projects that you want to do, or if there are things that need to be built around it. We've had some other discussions about like DeFi tooling and other things. I know it's not specific to Shannon, but like, what are some pieces along the way that you all would like to see? And then we can find ways to get funding or put on RFP or whatever it needs to be to make that happen. So don't think of it as like a one way we're telling you, but as more of like, yeah, yeah, that's a great call out. So when we put this out, there's a frame, let's call it framing. uh, And they're obviously uh, it's at an altitude where it's like, you know, consumable by all, but um, yes, everything Zach said is true. Um, If you're like, Oh, that's interesting. But like, what about X, Y, Z? Can we do this other thing? Like, absolutely. Like, uh, it's a living, breathing, dynamic document. It is not owned directly by us. We're just stewarding it. It's yours. So this is our cut. And we did solicit some feedback from members of the community already. Uh, and we expect that once we drop the big one, that it'll be, uh, obviously, we'll want more. And we'll continue updating and adding your pieces to it till we, till we get to a spot where it's incredibly comprehensive and it has a mix of core developments um, items as well as uh, community-driven uh, things. And, and yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, don't think of it again as like just just pushing, uh, here's what we want to do onto you guys. It's more about, this is what, um, this is our ideas and, and, uh, from a limited, a limited group. And, and we want to expand this. This is like, think of it as a starting point on which to expand out to cover all the other things to make it, uh, even more comprehensive, uh, and collaborative across the community for sure. Yeah, thanks, Mateo. And I've got one more for you. Um, so, like, I, I don't know this personally, so maybe it's very obvious to other people, but who does the, you know, like the number crunching for a thing like opening archives uh, for like the Celestia archives for Node Runners? Like, is there any type of economic um, evaluation out there, or is this something that we'd be looking for the first people who want to do this to, to build out for us? Uh, yep. So that's a conversation that's definitely happening, uh, Grove side, um, who have been typically, um, putting a little bit of like early adopter, uh, budget together for, for that, uh, is my understanding. I don't want to speak for them, but, um, that's something before, I know Olshansky was going to jump in and, and take a look at it. Um, and, and see but again i think right now we're at the like re- let's register some interest first um and if we do get some people to go yeah yeah i would want to you know uh, i would like to take a look at that um if we've got a combination of the interest and we can um you know and we can find ways to help uh with sort of the ramp up around that and you know uh, then, then we, then we would. So it's the combination of those two things that'll, that'll green light, uh, Celestia archive is a, is a project. Um, and then, yeah, Harry calling out a note. Yes. Like, so, um, remember the roadmap that you're going to see again, it's broken out by releases and things. And our goal here is, uh, Shannon mainnet will have as few as we can get to feature parity. Plus there'll be some extras there. Um, uh, which is going to be exciting, and I think this will be the first time when we drop the roadmap that people will understand like what are the extras. Um, 
any new features and things like that um, won't be core team responsibility. Uh, it'll be like, what can the community do? Because we de- to uh, Harry's point, we don't want to slow down the release. Um, but once we have a test net up uh, that's going to be stable, um, then I would a- anticipate that that is when integration work and third party work can start to happen. And then, you know, once mainnet is available, then it's like community wants to like, you know, pull a PR and stuff they can. Um, so yeah, it's really about setting ourselves up for success for sure. And you'll see some releases, like I said, that go past mainnet. Uh, and that's where all, that's where the fun will be had. <laughs> Let's do it that way. Cool. Okay, uh, moving on, like, because uh, we've got uh, more things to go. Uh, I am now going to turn it over to. Oh, wait, I got one more thing. Um, as we've been, um, you may have recalled last, last call, um, we kind of did a hey, Shannon, there's here's a way to think about the stack in layers. And we talked about um, some of the other third party uh pieces that we're that we're building with right now we talked about rollkit and we talked about astria as our sequencer and we talked about uh the da layer and things like that as one way to start to reason about the new chain that's being built so here's another way to think about it uh in in a way i like to think about it is in the, in the network are they the same as morse or is that changing and um you know the feedback is uh it's changing a little bit um you're all familiar with gateways uh everyone's aware of grove um we know notice is coming soon that will be more specific uh and the gateway kit uh that, that will be released by them supports morse um in shannon there will be uh an sdk as well the team is already um, collaborating on whether that will be some combination of what Nodis has done plus what core team has done. They will figure that out. Really, the takeaway is that that SDK will, in the beginning, support gateway building, but then towards the end, like post mainnet, will also support applications that want to be, let's call them, um, self-gateways. So uh, the, the concept of a private gateway just for your application if you don't want to go through a public gateway uh and and the point the goal here is that all access patterns look the same uh and and that we've got you know we've got an sdk that supports all that so the team is already laying the foundation for this uh and this gateway actor we expect will be an actor that grows on shannon in in a way that we've never really had on morse um, then obviously applications, super important. Um, uh, what will be different is that, uh, staking permissionlessness, like no caps, uh, some of the, you know, some of the governor will be taken off and, and we'll just be able to go. So that'll be exciting. Um, servicers become suppliers in Shannon. Uh, there's a reason for that. Uh, up until now, we've only ever thought of pocket as, um, as, as a protocol that supports, uh, uh, blockchains. So we had this concept of a chain ID. Um, but the more we thought about that building Shannon out and wanting to be able to like, you know, expand into like LLMs and other kinds of services that, that we can support. Um, we wanted to use a concept of a service ID, not a chain ID. Uh, and so the naming there started to get like really kind of weird, especially if you're a developer and you're like, I want to do a place or like whatever or i want to quickly scan through the code so we decided to change the name of uh services to suppliers in shannon uh so you'll hear that going forward but when you hear supplier it's the old servicer and chain id is now service id um again there'll be speaking and slashing here and then we're also um there'll be some interesting things around pricing uh dynamic compute units or or uh in a uh let's call it discovery phase right now and that is really to try to set us up to be able to support um non-blockchains um we'll need compute units to be able to onboard like llms basically um so yeah some cool stuff around that. um validators we will no longer have so that is not our Requirement for a roll-up. Uh, all of the validation is happening at both the sequencer and the uh, data availability layer. So validator 
we know them today in pocket having a validating note like are gone uh so we will no longer have this actor in our ecosystem um and that said the um our choice of astria as a um decentralized sequencing platform also kind of eliminates the need of having a sequencer actor in our direct control or our ecosystem because now we're buying sequencing as a service essentially um so out, there will be no replacement, basically. Um, and then finally, um, you maybe uh, if you've been around the ecosystem a while, uh, you would have known about this as a fisherman. Uh, but fishermen are now called watchers in Shannon. This is a this is quality of service related. This is an application that looks. Uh, and feels like an app uh, to a supplier, but is actually there to kind of like check them. Um, that'll be post mainnet, some v1.x version, uh, TBD. Uh, so it won't be there uh, in testnet and mainnet now, uh, but coming later. And that will be that quality of service related um, actor that's in the ecosystem. So this is what it will look like. Green guys will be there on day one. Uh, red's gone and, and orange is coming uh, is basically the way to think about this. And and I hope that these like little like chunks thinking about the network in different ways are like helpful for people. Um, we, we're we're going to continue to do this and we'll keep uh, in these calls slicing and dicing the new build in different ways to, to kind of give you like digestible chunks of ways to reason about the network. Cool. All right, Zach, over to you, buddy. Thanks, Mateo. Thanks for that overview. That's, uh, that's super helpful for me too. Um, I'm assuming that we're going to get some more, uh, like more details around the different actors and why they're relevant and stuff, or is that already in the doc somewhere that we can read up on it? Yeah, for sure. That'll be in the documentation. And again, my goal here is just to like kind of throw out some, uh, some little nuggets of ways that I think about and reason about the, the network that way people can kind of start to wrap their head around, like what the changes are going to be and, and what's still going to be relevant and what's coming soon, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, this will be documented. It'll also be on the roadmap. Um, and, and it'll be clear. So you'll, you'll hear about this more than once and in a lot of different ways as we kind of move towards Shannon. Cause I mean, it's a big change for everybody. So, uh, right. yeah, there's a lot of educational material that we need to produce. Yeah. Yeah. That seems really important too, for, um, current people running, running nodes and then, uh, changes for the future. So, um, if anybody here actually wants to, to work with us to build some of that out, I know there's a lot of experience, um, many years here. So feel free to ping us and, and we can work together on maybe like a video breakdown of this or something that's easy to digest. Cool. Um, Mateo, thanks so much for the, the overview and the updates. Uh, I, I wanted to just kick off. I, I, you may notice the meeting's a little bit bigger today. So I've asked all the people that are getting sockets or pops to join this call. And so I just want to do a little bit of framing as to why we're doing that. Um, talk a little bit to the people who are getting sockets and pops and then do a kind of an overview of what's currently open. And um, yeah, just so we have a little bit of transparency. So, you know, the biggest one right now is I just want to frame that uh, most of our sockets are in support in some way of the protocol whether we're talking about um, marketing related or adding features or building on something that already exists, it, it tends to be in support of what is being built somewhere else. And so I think it's really important that all of us are up to date on what is happening with the protocol um, and having someone like Mateo going through all the changes that are coming um, and Harry talking about how like Merkle trees and other things work, being more educated just generally is really helpful for the whole ecosystem especially on my end. Um, and so then understanding what's being built, that way as we open sockets or maybe we see gaps, we know where we can open a socket to uh, support the work that's being done. So really the, the idea here is how do we get more um, cross visibility for all the people that are collaborating on the project? Um, and I know we have a couple of different meetings throughout the week, but this is going to be the one where if you're, if you're getting paid from the protocol in some way, you really should be here and thinking about how we're supporting each other. And that really falls into support and opportunities, which is, you know, I think as we're posting a little bit more about how sockets and pops work and seeing you know, even a conversation yesterday 
uh, in the ecosystem call about wanting to open a labs. I think I think what I'm hearing is that people have good ideas and they need to be supported by the DAO. And there's not necessarily clear and easy paths as to how our community can get involved or get paid to do this work. And so I'm just sitting here saying like, well, how do how do we surface the opportunities that um, are out there? And then if there isn't a path currently, I don't want people to be frustrated that there's no way to solve the problem. I want them to come to me, Mateo, Ads, whoever's in the group. Ben, I think Ben's on. Yeah, Ben's on the call. You should be coming to the foundation and saying, I want to do blank. Show me how we can make it happen. And then that's our role really to facilitate and steward the project and say, this seems like a great idea. Let's get community uh, rallied around it and find a fair way to um, get the right team building it. And so that's kind of the framing here. I also want to call out too that um, anybody getting paid from a socket, once the new governance system happens, I'm going to expect that people will be doing a lot more of evaluating each other's work. And I mean this in a, in a nice way of like, how are we helping each other to do our best work and how are we making impact in the network? Um, you know, I can spend a hundred hours building something that nobody uses versus um, Ian can spend six hours building a tool that everybody needs. And, and really saying like, well, the impact here is that Ian's tool is far more important than my hundred hours of labor that didn't do anything. And so we should be helping each other understand like what work is being done and what um, impact it has on everybody else here. So while that's not a current requirement, I really do want us to start thinking about how we are guiding other people to do better work. Um, and, and part of that, it goes a little bit further down in the expectations here, which is around empathy and accountability. Um, I feel like there's been some, maybe maybe some uh, miscommunications in the past, uh, but the idea for, at least for me, the way that I'd like to see this is like, we're actually here to help each other and support each other. So having empathy in my communications with you all of like, hey, people have lives, people have kids, people have families, people have other jobs. You don't work full time just for pocket. Um, so understanding that those things do happen. And then also the accountability, which is, but at the end of the day, you're spending money that the DAO has given you to do a job. And so making sure that other people um, who might be doing the job that you are not currently doing, like they don't have the opportunity to make that money that you're getting paid. So just keeping people accountable to continuing to do the work and then um, supporting you with the things that you can't do. I think lots of people work in silos here. Um, you know, we work async or in different time zones. And so calls like this are an opportunity for us to work together, hopefully to start getting comfortable coming off mute, telling each other what we think, realizing that everybody in this room is an expert in many ways that other people are not. Um, and even though there's a lot of smart people in the room, sometimes you see a very obvious thing that people in the weeds do not. So really encouraging everybody to speak up a little bit more um, because this is your project. And at the end of the day, if you want to see the token price go up, if you want to see your hard work get um, rewarded, um, we do have to we do have to speak up and sometimes call out what seems like very obvious, easy things. Um, so, having said that, I think I've gone through the framing and expectations a little bit. Ben, I don't mean to put you on the spot here, but you have lots of good thoughts around this. I know it's probably three a.m. your time, but um, do you have anything you want to say? Uh, I think I think that was a great intro. So so not really. Yeah, just just like the historical context of sockets is um they're a community program um pnf has really sort of tried to be the catalyst for that and put in place a, a simple and light mechanism for for people to contribute um but ultimately yeah that the, the community and and all of us are responsible for uh, for driving maximum value out of that so um i think we can be doing a lot more in terms of what we're talking about here in collaboration and collaboration is giving feedback um you know, the more that we are conscious of what each other are working on and then adding our own, you know, expertise to that, um, I think the better every socket will get. So, um, yeah, really ex excited to see it sort of kicking off now in, in terms of um, sharing a bit more and, um, yeah, hopefully uh, participating more in each other's work. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, I appreciate that. And um, I'll just leave a little open floor here. If anybody does have any questions or thoughts, concerns about, that uh, I'd love to hear them. Um, and if you're not comfortable, you can always DM me. Um, my DMs are open. Prefer Discord generally, but Telegram is if something's on fire. I'll just give it a beat here if anybody has anything. Cool. 
Um, so, Matteo, can you jump us to the next slide here? I hope he hasn't run off. There we go. Beautiful. Um, so with that in mind, so I just want to do a quick rundown of the current sockets we have open, shed a little bit of transparency on onto what is being done here, and then maybe um, talk a little bit about how I'm thinking about it. And I just want to start with, these are not hard and fast rules. These are just what I'm thinking for now. And if you all disagree with me, or if you disagree even a little bit, um, send it my way and we can reevaluate it. Um, the, there has been a little bit of like unclarity around the socket itself. So right now, the, the general thought is that you can open a socket. I'm using two grand as kind of the permission and permission light um, delineation line. If you're asking for less than 2000 a month, that's kind of where I, I will be a little more lenient and say, okay, we can run an experiment. Maybe I don't think it'll be good, but you have the opportunity to come in, do good work, prove it's doing a good work, and then we can increase it. Anything above 2000 for a socket currently is going to be uh, a lot more scrutinized. So you're going to have to prove your impact. Uh, there's not going to be a, uh, an expectation of any handholding here. Uh, and you really need to be able to show every month why uh, the money that you're making is, is driving impact. Um, I think sometimes we live in a little bit of this like crypto is fake money, play money kind of world. But if you're getting a $3,000 socket, that is a... Um, that is close to the average American salary per year. And so just keeping in mind that you're making quite a bit of money compared to the rest of the world um, at a $3,000 socket. So I just want to be aware that that money does add up quickly and we can end up spending a lot of money that's not driving impact. So um, if you're asking for more than that 2K line, we're going to be a little bit more uh, likely to either rein it in or or shut it down after the first month if it's not driving that impact. So. Um, with that said, here's what we have open currently. I do want to call out the two at the bottom here. One's whole under uh, under review and another one's launching. Um, Tracy from Pocket Pool late, made a, an update, but we're waiting for her to come back. And then Node Fleet, we just need a little back and forth before we um, decide to open that that socket. But everybody else, you know, the top of it's a lower price value. The bottom's higher. You can see that the general buckets here, we have quite a bit of documentation and marketing related uh, sockets this month. So um, really excited to see how those are going to pan out in a month like January, where we've had um, some big news around the ecosystem, as well as good like token uh, value over the last month or two. Um, and this is mostly for you all to see who's working on what. So if it seems like there's something that overlaps with the work that you're doing, um, please reach out to them. I don't need to be the, the, the node for this or the person in the middle. Y'all can work together. Um, help each other do your work, and then show that impact over the month. Uh, anybody have any questions here? Oh, on the right side here, I just have the kind of the general person who is going through and evaluating the socket. Um, at the end of the at the end of the month, these are the people that will say, "Hey Ben, does this socket seem like it's it's driving impact here?" Um, if my name's on it, I'm doing that by myself, um, and the other ones are just kind of um, additional support when I have questions around that. Questions, concerns. I do want to say that I am really excited that we've had a bunch of sockets open this month. It is kind of a calibration month for all of us where we're going to understand what's working, what's not working. Um, and then as we get into February and March with a little bit more oversight from PNF, I think we'll, we'll get to a really good space. Cool. All right, uh, Mateo, I'm going to jump to the next one. Oh, Shana, see you went off. Do you want to say anything? Uh, yeah, yeah. My, uh, my kind of question, this was... Uh, a bit of a blend with stuff that uh, Mateo was talking about with the protocol, but uh, with a lot of these sockets, I believe a number of them, including you know, including the wallet, uh, are going to rely on a are going to need some kind of SDK uh, for Shannon to you know migrate our sockets over to Shannon. So uh, that's one thing that I, I don't know if. I didn't see it mentioned at all, but is there any strategy right now to uh, getting a uh, SDK? And is it going to be the same as the old pocket SDK, uh, just updated to Sam Shannon, where all the calls are going to be the same? Or do we have any understanding of uh, the SDK for Shannon? Mateo, I'm going to pass that to you. I don't know if you have talked about that with the protocol team or maybe if, uh, Ben, you've had a conversation around that. 
Yeah, yeah. I think you're you're referring to like Pocket JS. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, it's a good question. Um, I think it's like it's uh, known. Uh, we need to get to testnet first. Um, so I will, uh, unless there's someone from Core Dev right now that can answer that, I will. Yeah, run that so question. we've not actually okay. got anything like that yet. Um, as you mentioned, it um, it will probably be very easy to transfer the Pocket JS code base over, or release like a new Pocket JS version um, while we're in testnet. Um, but there's nothing to, uh, there's nothing been done as of now. Um, but that will probably be something that happens during the testnet phase. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we someone need... is actively maintaining pocket JS. So whoever's doing that is probably going to be the one that does the transition during the testnet phase. Uh, is there someone maintaining it? I've never heard of that. Uh, uh, anyways, uh, re regardless. Um, okay, cool. So it, 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 that seems like something that's going to be more of an after testnet kind of thing. So uh, as long as it's on the, um, you know, as long as with what people are planning for Shannon, um, if they're wanting any services to participate, in the test net, meaning like the wallets or things of that nature, yep. uh, sure. then that'll just need to be sure to be on folks' mind. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's a good call out, Shane. Like, um, and that was our intention, right? What the whole point of the test net is a, a combination of yes, there's protocol things and it's a chance to troubleshoot bugs and all that with the actual um, <clears throat> uh, implementation of the protocol itself that will be all be run on the mocha testnet uh celestia's mocha testnet right um but then that is also our window of opportunity to work on all of the third-party integrations where, where like you know um pocket js is one of many that then enables all of you to be able to go oh now i can move my thing uh so yeah Good shot going already on it. Yeah, it's good. This is exactly why we want to talk to you guys. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Um, some chatter uh, in the chat. Uh, awkward. But um, yeah, this is exactly it, Shane. So if that's something you want to open up and maintain and discuss, it's a great opportunity to either open a socket or um, put something in the forum so we can we can start considering that. And I just want to also call out, like, this is exactly why we have the community, right? Like, there's a million things to do, and we can't think of all of them. So really relying on you all to find these things that we're just not prioritizing that do need to get done. So thanks, Shane. Um, okay. I'm going to keep pushing us forward here. So uh, one of the things that needs to be overhauled on our end is we want to get our docs to be best in class. Um, we've been saying this for a bit. We do have a bunch of sockets right now on the docs, and... Um, currently Patrick Skinner's kind of taking the lead for this one. So I'm going to actually hand it over to you, Patrick, to talk a little bit about what you're doing, what opportunities there are for other people to collaborate with you and, and where we're heading. Yeah. Everybody can hear me. Okay. We can. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, cool. Well, finally, what we're all here for, you know, everybody is secretly here just to hear about documentation so uh, and i'm totally uh excited to oblige so uh number one uh shout out to mike and all of his awesome updates he's he's been doing some great work in, in um uh putting up some good prs um what is to come is uh finally getting the repo under pocket foundation it's just bit of a weird coordination thing of uh, trying to get over from uh, one uh, GitHub account to the actual organization's GitHub account, but we've, I think we finally got it laid out uh, and getting it done ASAP. Um, the three video tutorials that are coming out, um, uh, I put together three video tutorials and uh, kind of a basic intermediate advanced kind of thing. Uh, but in essence, uh, I'll have the video just talking about how to use uh, public uh, public endpoints uh, for general wallet usage. Another one, which is, you know, goes kind of 
uh, hand in hand with what Zach was talking about with uh, Slack proposals is uh, how to write proposals. And so I'll have a page uh, that will be added to documentation on how to properly write uh, Slack proposals. What does it mean to write Slack proposals? And I'll probably consult Zach on some of the extra information about, you know, uh, different levels of scrutiny and everything like that. Uh, so if you're ever interested in uh, writing your own Slack proposal, there will be a uh, written and video tutorial uh, specifically dis uh, discussing on how to do that properly. Um, and then another one is just uh, uh, general uses for the developers on how to use um, uh, public endpoints inside of an application. Uh, the next part is, oh, sorry, uh, before I go away, um, I'm more than happy to hear any uh, desired videos. Uh, like if you, if you have any requests for specific uh, coding tutorials, it can be as technical as you want, uh, or it can be as basic as you want. Uh, let me know, and I'll be more than happy uh, to do the best I can to create uh, tutorials. If it's really, really advanced, it's something I'm not uh, super familiar with, I will probably hit up some of the team members and everything for a little bit of assistance, but I'll be more than happy to do what I can to create as best of tutorials as possible to maximize uh, the value and uh, content inside the documentation. Um, Contribute process. If you want to contribute to the documentation, uh, I highly suggest fork the repo, uh, make your updates inside of that repo, and then uh, fork, clone, update, push, and then just create a PR. I'll be able to review that PR, and if it's in accordance to everything uh, that is required for documentation, then I will actually merge it. Um, if there are some changes and everything that I need to make, I'll, I'll just add that to the PR request. Um, I, I am, uh, based on some conversations and everything today, I am going to be creating a page based on the context of how to properly contribute to the documentation. Uh, this will also include, uh, you know, uh, include some of the language language and tone on some of the writing. Uh, and so that's going to be a really, really important aspect to make sure that we are always keeping a consistent language and tone inside the documentation. Uh, so I'll have the, the contributor guide uh, in there probably in the next couple of days. Uh, infographics, uh, Team Patrick is, uh, you know, uh, he's actually got his uh, socket open uh, as well. He was on, on the top of the list. Uh, him and I are going to be collaborating on creating some more infographics for the um, uh, for, for the documentation, just to you know bring additional visual value for the documentation. Um, and outside of that, when in doubt, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, complaints, whines, grades, crisis, anxiety, please feel free to reach out to me, and I'll be more than happy to help out if, if there's anything I can help out with in accordance to documentation. That's it. Should people just Discord DM you, or what's the best way? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can Discord DM me. You can even just ping me in any of the channels. I watch my uh, my uh, I watch my notifications like a hawk. So if you if you just lost and don't know where to DM me, ping me in any of the channels, and I'll, I'll be more than happy to hit you up. Someone was about to speak that I cut off. No. Um, Patrick, a question for you is, is there a way to make it easier to contribute than, uh, let's say you're mostly non-technical, but you see some changes that need to be made. Like what's the best way to be like, I don't want to create a new repo fork or repo, create a GitHub account. Like, is there a way to do it? That's more user-friendly, let's say. That's, that's coming, uh, not right now, but that is coming. And the reason why is uh, we kind of have a little bit locked down just so we can like smoothen out some of the language and everything in the documentation. So uh, up front, uh, we need to make sure that our developers are heavily supported. All that information is being provided, but it's also being very, uh, uh, very well reviewed. Um, so at this point, I've kind of got things a little bit more locked down. Uh, so the, the current process right now is required for the repo, but uh, I'm hoping by the end of the month that I will have um, I, I'll have other rails for allowing people that are non-technical to be able to make contributions directly through the uh, Gitbook channel. Uh, that is coming. I just try to make sure that um, uh, uh, I, I'm trying to make sure that we have a very clear language and everything done. Uh, I, I believe I'll probably outline that process during the contributor guide. So at this point, it's not possible, but hopefully within the next couple of weeks, it will be. Great. Um, awesome. Cool. I'll, I'm really excited to, to see what comes out of those and looking forward to it. Um, and it seems like if other people are running into issues or they, they don't, if they want any changes to be made to the docs, obviously Patrick's the person to go to for now. So 
um, appreciate you stepping in and filling that role. And yeah, I think this is this is it, right, Mateo? Throwing it back to you. Yeah, cool. Um, now we have reached the uh, well. Look at this. We almost used up all the time in the sun. Uh, cool. Um, floor's open. If anybody's got any anything they want to shout out, talk about, now would be the time. Hey, can you guys hear me? Hello. Yes. Great. We hear you. Hey, everybody. It's Ian, Crypto Node Tools. I'm working on PopNest. I uh, just wanted to give a quick update so everybody knows I'm not absent on it. Um, and to say sorry for the slow month around the holidays after Thanksgiving. I got COVID and then, of course, you know, Christmas and New Year's. Um, and I've got a lot on my plate as an individual with all the notes that I have to run. So sometimes if I take just a little bit of time off and I come back, there's a lot to catch up on uh, before I can get back into development. Um, but aside from that... Uh, Right now, I just want to let everybody know I'm focused on the back end, uh, and I do plan to eventually replicate pretty much everything that's on PoxScan. Um, but I don't outsource anything, and you know, just be patient with me in the meantime. Um, uh, I have been stuck on a bit of a bug uh, in the way that I've been batch inserting transactions into the database, and I feel obligated to fix that uh, before I build out other features or improve the front end or embellish the data that's getting indexed. Um, and since I added um, a, a bull queue with Redis, uh, since Node.js is single-threaded, uh, um, and I've been trying to fiddle with batch sizes and different levels of concurrency and trying to scale Postgres vertically, uh, I keep thinking I've got it working and then put it into production, and then within a couple of hours, blocks start getting inserted without any transactions in them. Um, and my original goal was to get uh, Postgres into Kubernetes uh, with the Postgres operator to, so it would scale, but I spent way too much time spinning my wheels on that in December. Uh, and so uh, it's still one of my goals, but I'll have to circle back to that later. Um, right now, my plan for today is uh, I'm going to separate a read-only replicate of the database uh, for the API side to query from and have the block processor write into a separate master uh, and with Nest.js, it's easy to enable or disable different modules so that I can build um, one piece into a separate container, like the API into one container and then the indexer into another one using the same mono repo. And I hope to get that done today, and hopefully that'll resolve the issue with those missing transactions and I can get back to um, what I hope to build out, which is um, moving away from the bull queue with Redis, and I plan to implement Pulsar, um, <clears throat> which I am open to, to input on that if anybody has any uh, thoughts on it. But I was doing some research into real-time event streaming and message processing. Uh, the main, the big one out there that, that most people are using is Kafka. Uh, but as I was comparing alternatives, um, I landed on Pulsar as what I'd like to move forward with. Um, and it's my hope that uh, at least this, the structure of this, this indexer that I build is not only usable for, for a slow block time chain like Pocket, which has blocks every 15 minutes, uh, but for chains with much faster block times and frequency and volume of transactions. Um, it's challenging, but impossible to do uh, with async queuing, but uh, it should be uh, much better with Pulsar uh, to facilitate lower latency, almost real-time processing of blocks and transactions. Um, aside from that, um, I would like to ask for uh, some, some beta testers and for feedback as to what the community would like to see on the front end. Um, so if anybody wants to volunteer for that and be basically a patient but gentle prodder, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Awesome, thanks Ian. And I dropped, um, Ian, can you just double check? I think I have the most up-to-date production version of that. Uh, in the chat. And then I've also dropped below that the thread for uh, people who want to help beta test. So uh, if you got to, if you want to jump into that socket thread and uh, let Ian know you're available, that would be awesome. He posted the one for uh, node fleets. Do you have the, do you have the uh, correct one then? I'll go find it. One sec. Thank you.
Okay. Uh, um, Ian, awesome. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's, it's Ben, just, just to jump in. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited to see this sort of moving forward. Um, uh, so it'd be great if, yeah, people can sort of jump in, help Ian out with some um, uh, some feedback or uh, some testing um, on that side. Um, just an anecdote for you, Ian. Um, yeah, Pocket, uh, Pocket Scan was down a couple of weeks ago, I think, and... Um, yeah, Dermot jumped in and, and was sort of using your Explorer to, to get what he needed. So um, uh, it's really cool that, um, yeah, this pocket sockets program sort of enabled you to, to get this started and, and um, already it's solving some of the challenges we have of, of sort of being so reliant on um, on pocket scan for everything. So um, so well done and, yeah, cool to see it, see it keep going. Yeah, thanks, Ian. Um, I really appreciate you stepping in too and just uh, calling out the things that you need and you need the help with. It's a perfect use case of these calls. Um, so yeah, uh, with the open floor, does anybody else have anything else that they are working on that they'd like to talk about or any needs that they have? And if you want to do a larger presentation, um, we're going to do this every single builder's call. So you can definitely DM me and get a slot for the next one. Mateo, that might be it. Might be the sign. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, thanks, everybody. Great start to the year. Uh, we'll be back in a few weeks. Um, please keep some of those open calls uh, on your mind. Remember, once again, uh, Celestia Node Runners for the archive node. If you hit their docs, they've got quite a few node categories. So that's the one to check out. Uh, and then anyone that does want to jump in and give some presentations in this meeting going forward, uh, Zach and I would like to agenda out the next like four to six. Um, yeah, awesome, man. So let's like have a chat about that. Um, and uh, yeah, be great to uh, uh, get some more of you involved and, and make some presos. So awesome. Um, appreciate everybody's involvement. And uh, yeah, see you the next time. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon.